Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be invited to speak here today. Um, as you can probably tell by my accent, I come from the US. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to be talking about my organization, Remember the Girls. And while I don't have a CTD or a creatine transporter deficiency, I am a carrier of a different X-Link genetic condition. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my journey and how this led me to forming Remember the Girls, which is the first and only international organization for X-Link conditions. So starting a little bit about my story, um, I'm 25 now, but when I was three years old, my dad was diagnosed with a rare X-linked condition called adrenal leukodystrophy, or ALD for short. Uh, it is a neurological disease, and over the next two years, my dad lost the ability to walk, talk, swallow, and developed early onset dementia, and he passed away about two years after his diagnosis when I was five. But at the time of his diagnosis, my family was told that since ALD is an X-linked condition, um, like CTD, it's carried on the X chromosome, that this made me an obligate carrier of the condition because any male with an X-linked disease will always pass it to his daughter. Um, but, you know, at the time we were told that I had nothing to worry about. Sorry, sorry they're giving me a signal, but I'm not sure what... Oh, slower. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try my best. Um, but at the time, we were told that, you know, I had nothing to worry about until I eventually went on to have children. Um, so I do remember from an early age, my mom did tell me that I was a carrier, probably around the age of eight. And she would re-explain this to me every couple of years, draw out, you know, the X's and the Y's and explain why this disease impacted my dad, but wasn't going to impact me until I went on to have children and that I would have a 50% chance of passing ALD down to my children and 50% that I would have a boy with the condition and 50% that I would have a girl that was a carrier like myself. When I was 12, she took me to see a genetic counselor and an ALD specialist at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, which is in Baltimore in the US. Um, and this is really the first time that I heard that there was females, um, there were females with ALD who had symptoms um, but at the time, we were still told that it was super rare and that it was very unlikely that I would ever develop symptoms because women were just carriers and that there was nothing to worry about. Um, at this time, I also saw a genetic counselor and learned about my options for family planning. Um, so that was a positive experience overall because I was able to understand what this would mean for my future and that I could still have a family um, without ALD. I also, at this time, began to attend ALD conferences, which led to some confusion because I saw a lot of women there in walkers, using wheelchairs, using canes, and this was not matching up with what we were being told was the fact that women rarely got symptoms, and if they did, they were very mild and not severe. Um, felt like what I was seeing with my own eyes just was not matching what the research had been saying. Um, so overall, I, I was really glad to have known at such an early age because I feel like it helped with my psychological adjustment period. But as I got older, I started to understand more and more that something wasn't adding up and that I wasn't just a carrier of this condition. Um, more research on women with ALD started showing that symptoms were actually extremely common in women with ALD. Um, now we know about 90% of females do eventually experience symptoms. And those symptoms are, they can sometimes be mild, but are often not and complete, you know, completely um, life-changing. Many women eventually need walking mobility help, um, have bladder and bowel dysfunction. And while we don't face the terminal aspect of the condition, which I'm really thankful for, um, it, you know, we definitely are not just carriers and many of us have symptoms. I started getting more involved in the ALD community and what this meant for me as a teenager. And through this, I started learning that there are many other excellent conditions where females were facing similar challenges, where they were long thought to just be carriers and be completely unaffected. But in fact, they did have symptoms. However, these symptoms were often not taken seriously. Um, they were thought to be related to things like anxiety um, or other psychological manifestations. Um, and that in addition to symptoms, women also had a lot of difficult 
um, psychological symptoms such as guilt of passing down a condition. If a woman found out that she was a carrier only after having passed the condition down to a child, um, also fear of the future in terms of family planning, potential symptoms, and also just the family planning conversation in general. Um, and through this, I learned that there are more than 100 X-linked conditions, and many of these do affect women and girls, and women and girls are not just carriers. And of course, CTD is one of the many X-linked conditions where this is the case. So in 2017, it was my um, freshman year of college, or uni, as you would say here, um, I... It really only made sense in my mind to bring the women and the girls from these communities together. You know, we had a really strong group of us in the ALD community who were either like myself, teenagers, young adults, or older women who had been experiencing symptoms for a very long time, um, but weren't really getting the care they needed for those symptoms. Um, so this led me to found Remember the Girls, uh, which is an international organization that supports carriers and females impacted by excellent conditions. The main three things that we focus on are physical symptoms. Um, so one, you know, ensuring that women and girls know that they may be at risk of symptoms because many times, at least in the U.S., uh, females are still often told that they're probably not going to get symptoms or that the symptoms are going to be very mild. Um, two, supporting women through reproductive decision making. And three, um, supporting through the psychological side effects that can come along with being a carrier or female impacted by an excellent condition. And there are so many more um, things that we tackle as well, um, such as discussing your carrier status with partners, telling your daughter that she may be a carrier or be, may be impacted by an excellent disease, going through genetic testing, finding a doctor that believes your symptoms. Um, but over the course of, I guess it's been six years now, um, we've grown to a community of about 1,500 excellent carriers and females from around the world. Um, we have 50 different X-linked diseases represented in our group and women and girls from over 30 different countries. Uh, this is our website, which we just recently um, relaunched and rebranded. Um, you can find it by going to rememberthegirls.org. Um, but on our website, we have a variety of different educational resources, informational resources, and we recently just launched our self-advocacy guidelines, which includes things like my favorite probably being we have a letter from our medical advisory board um, with multiple physicians and genetic counselors, which we're encouraging women in our group to print and bring to their physicians. And it basically just says, you know, females can experience symptoms of X-linked diseases. Um, so don't discount that this woman's symptoms might be related to her X-linked condition. Um, if you know, we have any carriers in the room who, who would like to join or any parents of girls with CTD. We do have our private Facebook group, um, which you can find linked on our website as well, of, as well as all of our social media pages and our newsletter. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm really glad to be here and connect with another X-linked disease community. Um, and here is a collage that we made a couple of years ago with some of the women in our group and our tagline is not just carriers because so many of us were told that we are just carriers and we're really so much more than that. Whether or not we have symptoms, there's a lot more to our stories and experiences. Um, thank you.